Yes, we go the distance. We go the distance to reconnecting heart and soul as we move into our awareness and understanding of the healing power of prayer. Prayer is not about telling God what to do or speaking out words to say, hey, do this for me, get me that. It's not, it's not something we force. It is an experience we have. It's an embodiment that we express. And Rev Ami, your opening invocation today was stunningly beautiful, reflecting that, that consciousness of coming together with the divine to acknowledging it's about allowing ourselves to take a pause, to release the outer world for a moment so that we might breathe life into that very core of our being and accept and know this presence. It's about communing with. And what happens when we do that, there's a shift that occurs. Something happens, something changes and is altered. I was reading in a magazine this week that I wanted to share with you. It's an article called The Science of Prayer. And it's from a, a magazine uh, called Real Simple. And it's interesting because there has been scientific study done. And sometimes, you know, we look at that stuff and go, oh, okay. I only trust what I experienced firsthand. But what they're saying in here is that there is evidence that the brain reacts chemically to prayer, releasing both serotonin, which helps regulate mood, and dopamine, which is involved in the brain's reward system. One study found that prayer can curb the cravings of alcoholics. Another group of experiments looked at the brains of nuns and found that their parotial lobe, which helps the brain establish the spatial represent representation of self, quiets when they pray. There's something that happens to us when we pray. And this is why it is a healing modality. I have experienced the healing of prayer in so many ways at so many times, but there's a misunderstanding about what that means. Now here at CSL, we do what's called spiritual mind treatment. That is a technical name, but it comes right back to the idea of prayer anyway. And it's very practical in its approach because it's, it's clear, it's positive, it's personal. And I think that's one of the keys is allowing ourselves to accept and know our personal relationship with the divine, that there is a power and presence within us, not separate from, but right here. I don't need to go find it. I don't need to do or say something to appease it, but rather it is the loving essence of life itself that lives as me. And when I get out of my head and my worry and my stress, and I drop my awareness into that place of understanding of acceptance, then I begin to experience the healing power of prayer. So what does it mean to heal? Healing is about the way in which I perceive life, the way in which I perceive my current situations. Prayer is not a cure. It is a healing. And there is a difference. I remember when I was studying for ministry and I was doing my practitioner training, which is the first step. And I had a young man of 32 who had lung cancer come to me wanting to have treatment work done. And so in my mind, as a, a young and budding student, I thought, oh, he wants his cancer to go away. Not so. He asked me to treat that it would be okay. A simple request. He just wanted to be okay. He was where he was. He, had, he was fine with what was going on. He had no resistance to his cancer or the impending death that was facing him, but he wanted to know that his family would be okay. Well, all we could do was pray for what he asked for. When we pray, prayer has a power that's so beyond our understanding or comprehension that I think we must use it in a way that really honors and respects whoever we're praying for. When we pray for ourselves, Throw the doors wide open because it is you that is thinking the thoughts and, and receiving the gift and the blessing. But when we pray for someone else, we must only pray for those who request it 
and we must pray for what it is they request, not what we think they should want. This is really important that we stay in our lane, that as we pray, we know the idea that a person has asked for, and that's what we pray about. When I prayed with this young man, I first had to clear my own mind because I thought he wanted his cancer cured, his life extended. When he told me he just wanted it all to be okay, that was an interrupt for me. It caused me to pause, caused me to go, now what? So I had to begin in my own mind to shift, to shift my thinking so that I could be in a space to receive his request. I believe that prayer works 100% of the time. It may not work in the manner or at the speed or in the direction that we think it should, but it always, always responds. The idea of prayer is not about us talking to God. It is about us communing with the divine. It's about being present in life. It's allowing ourselves to receive the, the gifts of this life that we have, but also the energy and power that's within us, this divine presence that is being us. We can never be separate from the creator. When we come to understand, I am one with this divine presence. I am one in this universal intelligence. And because of that oneness, all that it is works through me. So the power is right here. So why is it that I don't heal? Why is it that I can say, God, please help me, and nothing happens? Because in that moment, I've separated. And it's about coming together. It's about taking a pause. It's about breathing into the moment and simply being. And it is in that place of being, finding gratitude and love. To not resist what life has brought, but rather to breathe into it and know that this too is changing. See, the manifest world is really the... Well, the grand illusion in some sense, because it is the minute something's created, it begins to deteriorate. But the essence of life does not. We are, we are created perfect, whole and complete. And it's up to us to begin to live from that awareness, to begin to celebrate the life that we've been given and to honor it, however it shows up, however it looks. And moment by moment to see ourselves as one with one with this divine presence. When we accept oneness, when we breathe into that idea, the spontaneity of healing can happen in so many different ways. I've worked with so many people with so many different health conditions or life conditions or whatever's going on. And every person that I've worked with, something has happened. May not have been exactly as they requested it, or not in exactly the fashion they thought it would show up, or exactly in the way that they meant for it to happen. But something happens. But oftentimes, you know, we do we do our prayer work and we and it's like, okay, God, give me this. And nothing happens and nothing happens. And then we get frustrated. You know, maybe we've got a big dream and it doesn't happen in four minutes after that, that those words have been spoken, that treatment's been spoken. And, you know, a week passes and nothing has occurred. We haven't won the lottery or we haven't found the new job or the love of our life. Or, and so we go, oh, well, it must not have been God's will. There is a power and presence in the universe and you can call it God or spirit, universe, first cause. You can cause it. Call it by any name. No name can define it. You go ahead and name it anything you want. And the truth is, 
It is not separate from you. It is being you. So that, that energy, that presence that you are saying, well, it must not be God's will. It must not be the universe's will. That's you. You are that. It must not be your will. And that's not saying that we are to blame for what's going on inside of us. Not at all. There is a consciousness. There is a consciousness, a collective consciousness in the universe that has within it all things. And in the moment that I'm in this life experience, I am subject to all of it. So I'm not to blame for having an illness. I'm not to blame for having some difficulty in my life. We all have difficulties. Can I hear an amen on that one? <laughs> Show me somebody who hasn't had a challenge. Show me somebody who hasn't had a bad day. Show me, hell, I was in the ER this morning with my daughter. Like it's whatever's going on in life. Life is happening. That's why we're here. We're here to live. We're here to be present with what is, not to have a bed of roses flashed out in front of us and accolades in every moment, but rather a life. And a life comes with ups and downs and here and there and, and moments of despair and moments of elation. And all of it, all of it is happening within this one divine presence. All of it. The cells in my body, the activity of mind, all of it is in this one divine presence. All of it. And so if that is the case, then what is it I'm resisting? See, I think when we don't have the life we desire, well, what is it that we've resisted? And I'm going to say that the resistance that is within us is about our own authentic, beautiful, magnificent life. Can I just be me? Can I simply be me. And in being me, love myself enough that I choose to love what is in front of me, the people, the places, the events. And when something occurs that I'm not really comfortable with, I really don't like, going back to source, to the cosmos, to cosmos, as Rev M, you would say allowing cosmos to open my heart and mind that I might see a new idea, that I might move forward with a new direction, that I might begin to open my mind in a way as to receive and to express and to allow something new to transpire. I am moving my life into form. No one's doing it to me. Nobody's doing it for me. I, I choose. And so as we journey along and, and life happens to us and through us, and some days it feels sticky and painful, and some days just joyful and delightful, all of it, all of it is part of this one infinite thing. And so the ideas of what's good and bad or right and wrong what if all of it is happening within this presence, this power? What if it's all happening in God? What if that word God is simply a word that describes this universal oneness? And if that's the case, what if it's love? And what if my life here is about learning about love, how to love myself and to love others, and that my prayer work is not about changing what's happening in this moment, but allowing myself to have a deeper relationship with life, a deeper relationship with everything, the animals and the plants and the people, What if, what if we changed the narrative and instead of looking at everything from a very specific viewpoint to open our minds, connecting our hearts, 
And knowing that just because I don't understand something or because I don't like something, that doesn't make it wrong and bad. Whatever's showing up in my life is moving me into a new level of awareness, a new understanding. And when I accept that, then my prayers become something different. That's when I, that's when I close my eyes and I just drop my awareness right into the heart. And I pray love. I allow that, that energy to move, that energy to uplift, to welcome. See, love for me is not just an emotion. Love in the grandest sense is truly another word for God. It's another word for life. And it means oneness and it means acceptance. So whoever you are and wherever you are, life is happening through you. And whatever's happening is causing us to move, right? We move with the flow of life. And when something feels painful, it will stop us. Maybe momentarily, maybe permanently, Maybe we'll get so caught in it that we just stop. But sometimes we have that experience and it changes our direction. And as we make that shift, as we turn that corner, all of a sudden there's a sense of liberation or freedom or possibility because we see that the path has not ended, but rather taken a turn. When we give up our resistance to life, which I believe prayer allows us to do, when we give up our resistance to life, we begin to flow with this universal energy, which then takes us, it takes us into a new experience. And oftentimes one that is far more powerful or remarkable or exciting than the one we'd had before. But all of it is moving us. We are here living life out of choice i think i think i think we chose to be here and whether you accept or believe that is okay but i th i think for me that's what i believe that i chose to come into this life experience that i i chose to see what it would be like to be in form to be in this place that appears to be limited, but it's only limited by my ideas. And as we begin to, to pray, as we begin to open our minds and hearts, all of a sudden we start to see things and to understand things and to expand the way we choose to live life and how we show up. And how beautiful is that? How beautiful is that to have a new viewpoint? to meet someone and talk to someone and begin to see the magnificence of who they are because you've let go of your need to judge or assume, but rather there's an openness to discover, an openness to relate, to listen, to be. So we're here not to talk to God, but rather to speak truth into life that the universe might then reciprocate and the flow happens where whatever I put out comes back to me. There's this continuous flow that happens and each one of us is a part of it. Each one of us, each one of us is a piece of that infinite potential, infinite possibility. So as you as you go about your prayer work, let go of outcome and breathe into the moment with great love and gratitude, knowing that whatever is, is. What is cannot be changed. But in the moment that I accept, allow, and sit in gratitude, I create and my, my next moment may very well be very different from my present. 
we are all powerful, intelligent and creative, and we are part of this universal intelligence. So I invite you now to just quiet your mind, close your eyes if you're comfortable, and let us go into a meditation. And today my meditation is more of a prayer, a treatment. There's one power in the universe, one infinite eternal presence, one divine energy of love and light that is right here where I am. It is the cells of my body, the activity of my mind, the life that I'm living, the journey that I'm walking, the world that I live in. And as I breathe, I feel this, this energy within me, this power within me begin to, to move, to expand. It is an energy of acceptance and love, of potential and possibility. It is unbound and unlimited and it is right here, directed through me by my thoughts, my actions. I use my imagination today to see something remarkable in my world. I choose to see a sense of unity and connection, of love and acceptance. I choose to see a transformation in my world that allows it to be safe for all people, whether I understand you or not. I choose to see you as divine. In this moment, I accept and know that all of humanity is exceptional. Not the exception, exceptional all. And I view the world around me not as something broken and flawed, but rather a beautiful mosaic being formed and created, a tapestry of exquisite color being woven together in such a way as to reveal the human story with its beauty and its pain. And all of it, all of it adding, not subtracting ever, but always adding, adding to the potential that life holds, adding to the possibility that, that may come from this particular moment in time. So my prayer is one of love. It is a prayer of gratitude. I feel the presence of God as life itself. I see the energy of the universe flowing, moving, creating, recreating, expanding, and growing, touching hearts and minds everywhere with this divine energy of oneness. And it is in that place of oneness that I see a powerful and positive presence fully revealed as humankind living without borders and boundaries but in oneness and acceptance with gratitude and grace. I accept life in its myriad of expressions, knowing that all of it, all of it is creating the journey that I walk. And so I'm filled with gratitude Gratitude for my willingness to surrender. Gratitude for my willingness to be present. Gratitude for my willingness to stand in this moment filled with grace. Gratitude. That I co-create with the divine. And I choose my life path. 
Today I do it consciously with great intent to bring love and joy, kindness, to bring peace. And it is with that in mind that I take a breath and I relax even further and I know all is well. And so it is. <laughs>